Hello, Tenno, and welcome to another episode of Warframe Tips and Tricks. As always, I'm your host, Father McFeely, and today we're going to revisit my previous guide on how to effectively farm for Vengeful Revenant. Now, my previous guide only gave you an encounter chance to run into the Conculist. Uh, there are now, thanks, for, uh, thanks to a recent update, two creatures that have a chance to drop Vengeful Revenant. Now, in order to effectively farm for it, I have created a loot build with Ivara utilizing her prowl, as well as a setup to allow you to easily kill sentience. Uh, what this is going to require you to do is actually take on enemies of a relatively high level, uh, 90 plus really. Uh, so to start out, first you're going to need Ivara. Uh, let me go into the builds here. Alright, so... Alright, so this build I call my Loot Thief build. With it, I have Speed Holster for 120% Holster Speed, and this is actually good because Holster Speed and Casting Speed seems to both affect the casting of Artemis Bow. Uh, now, I have Coaction Drift, which increases the uh, Aura Strength and Aura of Effectiveness by 15%, amplifying that effect. Excuse me. Uh, I also have Intensify and Transient Fortitude for ability strength up. As you can see, I'm at 115% strength. Uh, the reason for that, of course, is because I'm running overextended, which cuts back on the strength as well as stretch, uh, giving me more reach on Ivara's Prowl looting ability. Uh, of course, Prime Flow for the energy. Vitality, Redirection, just for sustainability, and then we have Prime Continuity. This reduces the energy cost of Ivar's Prowl, making it a little easier to stay cloaked for longer. Now the benefit to this build is that it allows you to sneak up on your target and loot from them and then easily kill them with no problems, or little to no problems, really. Uh, so, now I run typically... Um, Rubico Prime. Uh, of course, that is a loud weapon, and when you're using Ivar's Prowl, you run into a bit of a problem where you fire while using Prowl, it pulls you out of your cloak, giving away your position. So the alternative to that is to drop a cloak arrow, stand within that, and then fire. Uh, that way it muffles your shots, keeps your identity concealed, and prevents you from taking damage. Now, of course, I run... My Rubico Prime is my primary, I have my kit gun, the Irradiator, and then of course with this mission type we are going to run the Paracesis as, just like the Operator's Void Blast, it nullifies sentient adaptation. Uh, with this particular build it is rather gnarly. Um, I am using my Paracesis Critata, uh, increasing my melee damage and critical chance 150.1 and 164.2. Uh, I run that with Gladiator Might for increased critical damage, Berserker for an upwards of 75% attack speed, combining that with Virulent uh, Scourge and Voltaic Strike, giving it Corrosive, as Corrosive does eat through Sentience quite well. Uh, we have Organ sh Shatter for critical damage, as well as True Steel giving 120% critical chance. Uh, twice that if you use heavy attacks, so heavy slams, heavy slashes, those are really good, especially if you build up a combo. And then of course your prime pressure point. Uh, I run Rending Crane, but I'm actually about to re -forma so I can use Cleaving Whirlwind. Uh, I actually like that a bit better than Rending Crane, but I recommend this because it can, it can really just cut right through your sense. He has minimizing your uh, interaction with them. In addition to that, is if you're just using the basic attacks, you're not using any lunges or anything like that, you can actually stay cloaked using Ivar's Prowl, meaning you maintain proximity to them to loot, as well as remain undetected. So you can slash them and they'll be looking around trying to figure out, what the hell, man? Uh, so with all of that in mind, going back, just to amplify the effects of my melee, I have Arcane Fury, which increases my melee damage by 180% for 18 seconds on critical hits. Of course, that's a 60% chance 
with that, I've also got Arcane Strike. Uh, that gives me a 15% chance for plus 60% attack speed for melee weapons, increasing my attack speed substantially. Uh, I use this particularly for what I call my spin to win build, where I just whip right through a crowd and slash them to bits in, you know, seconds. Uh, with those builds out of the way, just to go over the abilities with this setup, 0.75% energy per second with a range of 9.4 meters and a steal time of 1.89 seconds. Now that's relatively good. I would like more towards the one second mark, but this is just fine. Uh, with your range, even though the sentients move pretty quickly, you can actually stay within reach of them pretty easily. Uh, so this is definitely good. Not worried about the headshot multiplier because you don't really get headshots on the sentients, uh, but the energy cost as well as the ability range is definitely helpful. Uh, so without further ado, we'll get into it. I'm going to basically skip ahead to the point where uh, I can demonstrate this. Now a little important details for you is that the two creatures that can drop this are going to be the Aerolist and the Conculist. Uh, the Conculus has been the standard, but the Aerolist is a new one thanks to the Railjack missions. Uh, unlike the Conculus, the Aerolist has a much higher drop chance for Vengeful Revenant, being 1.4% chance. So using Ivar as Steel, it increases that to about 2.8% chance, but that's primarily because you're running uh, a, a second loot chance. So, not too bad. Uh, with everything in mind, uh, I will go ahead and head over to navigation. Uh, first, let me go over to my railjack. Uh, give me that just a moment. Okay, so we're aboard the railjack, and in order to do this, you will actually need to play through all of the railjack missions up to the Veil vale Proxima. Now, once you're at the Veil vale Proxima, you will see. Uh, once you complete all of the nodes here, I believe it was the stipulation for it, you'll see a flashing red node, and that is actually a sentient anomaly. A sentient shuttle spawns in the area for you to interact with, and you run through and kill 20 sentients. You'll have symbolist, brachialist, uh, conculus, uh, and battleist, mimics, as well as the airless. Now, there's only chances that the ones you're looking for will spawn there, being the airless and conculist. So, of course, it is a little bit of a challenge, but you also have a much higher chance of getting this mod through this method, as well as various other rare mods and resources. So, I, I do recommend this versus the previous method, which was on Lua. Uh, now, without further ado, we'll get right into it. All right, to get things started, I went ahead and got into the Sentient Anomaly, and here we're going to look for Aerolists and Conculists. Uh, those are the two that have a chance to drop the uh, Vengeful Revenant mod. Now, I brought along my trusty Parasesis, as this thing is devastating to Sentients, or at least last time I used it, so let's hope that's true. <laughs> Additionally, you can use this with her prowl, so okay, here's a Battleist. Let's go ahead and loot him. Okay, now that he's looted, let's give him a boost. Right, he's a little out of reach, but the plus side is he can't really see me, so he can't hit me. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Let's check this out. Alright, so oh, anytime you see an immu node, make sure to destroy that, because it doesn't grant sentience immunity to damage. Okay, uh, let's see, that's a symbolist, but maybe go ahead and destroy the main mode. Alright, got a Shadu handle, that's nice. Kill him, and we got 
got air when we come. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so moving on. Okay, here we have a couple of us. Now let's see what he gives. Okay, so he just dropped the sentient core. Alright, that time we got Agile Aim. Another Brachyrus, we can just wipe him out. Alright, next one. I know it's pointing to another sentient, but I'm gonna see what's up first. Sometimes they're a little hard to reach. There's a battle list. Okay, we have another Conculus. Let's check our luck on that. No mod, just got a resource from or resupply from, really. Oh, so we're cutting right through them with the Paracesis, and I'll actually show you the build for that. Um, it's not really anything too special. Right. So as you can see, it makes it very difficult for them to actually take on because they can't see me and I'm not using any attacks to really draw their attention too much. Uh, while they know they're getting hit, they just don't know where from. <laughs> hearing something, but I can't really tell where it's coming from, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just travel to the next marker. Oop, and down we go. <laughs> Moving a little too quickly. I read about. I've not encountered any secret rooms yet. Okay, we have a minute. What's he dropped? Nice, that's what I like. Two 
anomaly shards. Now, a part of the reason you want to bring Paracesis, yeah, it cuts out the uh, immunity of the sentience, but also when you get to this thing here. That's the core of the ship. Uh, you actually need to do that in order to uh, complete one of the quests. And whoops, fell off again. That's alright, I can draw their attention to me. Symbolist. I really hate these platforms. There we go. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, the downside to the Paracesis is its swing distance. It's a, a little much. Alright, so we've run through there and we didn't really luck up on what we were looking for, but we got some pretty good resources this run. Uh, two anomaly shards, an astral twilight, and a shadu handle. So you can get some pretty decent drops from this, and you see I've got a buttload of sentient cores, so I mean that's a plus there. Uh, that pretty much covers everything on the guide. Of course, the drop chances of them are really low. The error list has a drop chance of 1.4%, so running two loot chances on it with uh, Prowl is uh, definitely nice. Um, but still, it's going to take some farming. This is still just the easiest because uh, not only can you loot it from Conculus, which I think have about a 0.4 or 0.6% chance to drop it, you can also loot it from the Aerolists, and both have a chance to spawn in this. Uh, of course, you're looking at 20 sentience each run, which is a huge plus. Uh, the downside to this is you can only do the sentient anomalies once per hour, I believe it was. Uh, so, I mean, it is nice to help with the farming method of all of it, but uh, I do hope this guide helps y'all, and we'll see you in the next video.